Another common question I get from cruisers is can I run my water maker in an estuary environment or a bay where it, based on the tidal flow or a river outlet where based on the tidal conditions I'm always not going to be operating on pure seawater either brackish or some degree of fresh water. So I wanted to cover that because I think it's an important thing that has again lots of myths and half truths associated with it. As long as you don't exceed the freshwater production rate of your water maker, there's nothing that says you can't operate this unit on a complete freshwater source like a lake. Now in seawater, for example, you'll need 800 PSI to overcome the osmotic pressure of the seawater to generate your freshwater production rate. However, if your boat's floating in a lake or freshwater, you may only need 150, 200 PSI. Varying degrees of salinity up to full seawater will need kind of a sliding scale of pressure. But as you're firing up your water maker, dialing up your pressure to 800 PSI, if you're watching your production rate, let's say I'm in a tidal estuary, I go up to 400 PSI, I see I'm reaching my 21 gallons per hour production rate from the 20 gallon per hour water maker, well I go ahead and stop there and continue to make water at 400 PSI for the duration of that run. Uh, maybe the next time you fire up, you'll need to go to 600. There's some plus or minus back and forth here, but what you're trying to avoid and what you have to be careful of and where the concept of never run a water maker on fresh water comes from is that without the, the osmotic pressure of the seawater holding back the seawater, under pressure, a lot of that water is going to be forced through the membrane. A membrane has a maximum amount of seawater known as flux or fresh water that can go through the membrane surface area pores without causing it to be torn or ripped. So if you try to overflow a, a unit, let's say you run a water maker at 800 psi from a fresh water source or during a back flush you put the, the unit up to 800 psi, yeah you could damage the unit by sending too much water through the membrane. But all the time there's clients of ours that they're in the Great Lakes, they'll go ahead and use the water maker there at 200, 300 psi to reach their rated output. Then when they head down the east coast and get to the seawater, they'll go ahead and find that they need to run it back up at the normal 800 psi. So there's nothing wrong with running it in brackish water, lake water, and estuary. It's just a matter of paying some attention to your production rate, which there's a big flow meter there on the front of the panel, or your pressure, just making sure you're staying within the operational parameters. And as usual, if you have a question seven days a week, I'm sitting here at the desk or working on my varnish work. So I'm always available for a quick phone call and email. And if you have any general questions about water makers you'd like answers to, or if there's a topic you'd like to see me make a quick video on, just shoot me an email and I'll be happy to do that. My name is Rich Boren again with Cruise RO Water. You can visit our website at cruiserowater.com or you can send me a direct email at info at cruiserowater.com. Have a good day, everyone.